We've looked at relative clauses, and now let's take a look at a positive phrases. And let's begin by looking at these opening two examples. The mysterious stranger, a wanderer who finds his way into the castle every winter, who cannot be trusted, what? Notice this is another fragment. And this one combines two things. It combines relative clauses. We can see one here, who cannot be trusted. We see another one here, who finds his way into the castle every winter. This relative clause is part of a larger phrase, and this is an example of our positive phrase. But notice, even though it contains a main verb, even though it contains a subject that goes with that verb, or I should say it contains a verb and it contains a subject that goes along with that verb, this is not a complete sentence. It's a fragment. So a positive phrases are part of larger sentences, but they, they themselves are not actually complete sentences. Here's another example. The historian and expert in medieval religious traditions will be giving a talk at Golden Smith Hall. Here, we have this appositive phrase in the middle of the sentence, an expert in medieval religious traditions, but this is one of those situations where we have to do the to or none situation uh, with commas. We need to have commas surrounding this phrase because it is additional information about who the historian is. It's not essential to the grammar or to the core sense of what the sentence is trying to say. So here we're going to surround our positive phrase with commas, which is very typically what, what we do. Most of the positive phrases you're going to surround with commas. Only the rare situation do you not use commas at all. So what is an appositive? Let's define this formally. An appositive is a noun or a noun phrase that modifies the noun that it follows or sometimes uh, proceeds. But typically, your positive phrase comes after the noun. And you can think of it as renaming or defining the noun. If you recall that skeletal fluorosis example from a previous video, that was an appositive phrase which was acting as kind of a definition. Uh, in the, this example here, I wouldn't say necessarily that this is a definition, but it is giving us more information about this historian and uh, his or her background. And that's what an appositive phrase does. And as we've said, most of the time, you're going to set it off from the rest of the sentence with commas. So everything we discussed with essential and non-essential uh, elements uh, comes into play here. Though I will say, as I mentioned before, most of the time, you're going to use two commas with these. Most of the time, they're going to be non-essential. There'll be extra info. Let's look at some examples of a positive phrases used correctly. This soldier, James Francis Ryan, was the last of five brothers to survive World War II. So here's our positive phrase. It's defining who the soldier is, giving us more information about the soldier, surrounded by commas. My favorite team, the New York Rangers, did not win the Stanley Cup this year. Same kind of thing. My favorite hobby, cooking at home, is relatively inexpensive. Now this may look like a participial phrase because it's got this ing. It's actually a little bit different. It's called the gerund phrase, but don't worry, but it's something that we don't really have to worry about, so I'm not going to go into details about this. Uh, just note that this is an appositive phrase describing what hobby we're talking about. It is the hobby of cooking at home is my favorite hobby. My ultimate goal, to win the championship, suddenly became an impossibility. So here we've got this appositive phrase in between commas. Presumably you could have it uh, not in between commas if it were essential, but you know either way it's the same thing. Uh, notice that this is called an infinitive phrase. Again, not really something you necessarily need to know. Just know that this is another example of an appositive describing the goal. A hunting dog bred to track rabbits. The beagle can be a stubborn hound. So here we have the appositive phrase actually come before the noun it modifies. And this is pretty rare. It's only really going to happen at the beginning of the sentence, but same kind of uh, situation. Notice we only use one comma because we're attaching it to the beginning of the sentence. It's not like uh, we inserted it in the middle, which we could have. We could have said the beagle, comma, a hunting dog bred to track rabbits, comma, can be a stubborn hound. That would have been fine as well. You're watching this video thanks to Camtasia, a screen recording program. So here the appositive phrase is at the end of the sentence. It's describing or defining what Camtasia is. And here again, we only use one comma because that's at the end of the sentence. There's no other place to put the comma. Many scientists now believe that fructose, a sweet molecule found in fruit, has been largely responsible for the epidemic of obesity and metabolic syndrome. So here's another example of an appositive phrase defining fructose. Notice these phrases can, can also be, well, clauses in the sense that they can contain verbs. So found is sort of acting 
more verb-ish than we've seen in any of the other examples previously. I guess bread would have been another example of that. Uh, but you don't just have you don't just have to have nouns and adjectives in this. You can also have verbs, and we'll actually see this in a better example here. Will Ferrell, a comedian who has starred in movies such as Anchorman and Elf, is a pretty funny dude. Here we've got an appositive phrase which also contains a relative clause, which itself has a subject who and a verb has. So you can kind of nest these clauses and phrases together, but either way you slice it, this is an appositive phrase describing uh, Will Ferrell, who he is giving us some information. So positive phrases, what you need to know for the test is just recognize them, know that they are legal. You can connect them to the sentences typically with commas, but sometimes you don't have to use commas as we've seen examples previously. Um, use your rules for essential and non-essential, and you'll basically be good on any question they might throw at you that would involve a positive phrases.